each other's color. And it don't matter if you love the or right. Series, six and a half inch convertible coaxial or component set. So yeah. grills, you can see we have this unique grill design with the tweeter cut out in the front and uh this is one of those designs where the screen comes off and you got the little uh, gooey bit that goes in the goes inside and then you snap this on. They look really nice when they're set up. They really do. They're good looking grills. But that's not what we're here to look at right now. We're going to get on down to the nitty gritty. Right, so inside the box we'll find these six and a half inch M series uh, speakers and if you're looking at them you're going okay that's a coaxial and yes that's essentially what it is but if you take this screw out in the back back here you can pull this out and you can put in one of the little uh, one of these little uh, phase plugs in here somewhere so you've got your tweeter mounting options right here. Allows you to mount your tweeter separately. <coughs> the wiring for the setup, there's more, a lot more. So there's multiple tweeter options. And then you got these aluminum face plugs. And each one of these will screw down into the speaker and take the place of that tweeter so that you can move it around. There's also some dip, dip ties and some more stuff in here. Pull off to the side because there's a whole lot to these guys. So looking in this box some more that I got right here, we've got our crossovers. We've got two different crossovers. And these are for the, the speakers because again, these are components that are mounted together, so you have to have a crossover or you have to uh, actively cross it over. Then you got the rest of your mounting hardware, the little metal bracket things for mounting it into the shells. And there's also these little brackets, and these allow you to mount the crossover to the back of the speaker. So I'll show you guys how that works. There's also the hardware for it. There's a lot of hardware in these boxes. A lot. So there's more hardware. And I'm going to have to get the instructions out and, uh, and read. But here's the mounting screws for the speakers. And also the little metal clips to put it on something that, does, that has a, a regular hole. So you can mount them in a sock locations. There's more screws in there. There's just a ton of hardware with these. But... I do know that there's a way, and it's probably using those L brackets, to mount your crossover to the back of the speaker. Probably, yeah, using these two little screw holes right here in the back. So this thing will mount back here. And then you can have just a one speaker wire running away from it. Good times all around. These things sound phenomenal too, guys. They really, really sound good. So, let me dig in here a little bit more, find those destructions. I've actually got two sets of these, and these are going to go in my Tahoe's front doors. So, let me dig in a little further and uh, find the instructions to figure out how to do this bracket thing. This is my first poke at them, too. So, let's see here. We'll take one of these crossovers out real quick. All right, so here's your crossover. You got your tweeter and mid-range wires here. And then you got your speaker connection right here. So if you've got a spade connectors, a little forky ones, or if you've got loose wire, you slide it right in here and connect it. And then this thing mounts on the back of the speaker, or you can put it wherever you want. If you've got a shallow hole, then you might want to put them somewhere else. 
but that allows your crossover to be on the back of the speaker or mounted anywhere you want it. So it's very cool. Cool setup. So I'm going to break it down and figure out how this all goes together and I'll show you guys. All right. We are, we have figured things out. I did put the instruction manual out and uh, it helped me with this project. So, here we go. Here's all the stuff. <clears throat> so you got these little L bracket guys here. And you've got, you know, there's another one of these. There we go. Anyway, I'll get to it. It's in the, in the bag. I don't want to pull one out. So you got these guys. They look, they look like a little belt clip. And you got the L bracket. The L bracket guys. And then we got these little bitty screws right here. Now the way this goes together, this part um, attaches, i make sure I get this right, because there's, this, is, this L bracket is an L, it has two different, yeah, okay, that part mounts to the speaker. So this part here ends up mounting to that just like that okay a machine situation right here so I've got nice machine threads and machine screws that sit down inside the bracket so it's a well thought out little kit so far I'm gonna screw them in and give them a give them a tweak make sure they stay in there good and uh, several ways you could do this. I'm doing it the way they showed it in the instructions. I think it's going to be the best way overall. Uh, and then these, these will get screwed to that. But I'm going to do the I'm going to do the do do the do the do. I'm going to do the do do do. I'm going to see which way I want this to run. I don't guess it matters really. Um, there is no, in, uh, there's no adjustment to this, uh, so there's no tweeter adjustment here, so that's a thing, but, so, so we gotta worry about that, I'll just go ahead and slip this bad boy on here, and it goes in this little groove in the back back here, snaps in place, that's actually, oh yeah, that's a nice clean snap. And conveniently, the magnet holds it in place while you uh, apply the uh, screws. The magnet also grabs hold of everything else that gets close to it. <laughs> okay, you got um, you got your tweeter wires, and they are enabled. This one's labeled tweeter and whooper, and that will go to let's see okay, so this is labeled whooper let's see positive whooper negative and tweeter positive okay so tweeter positive it's this one Slide that in there. If these feel good and snug, I use them. If not, I usually get rid of these little things. So there's that. Then we got tweeter negative. This would be tweeter negative right here. So we'll plug it up. We're trying to see how the, um, so far these connections feel really good. They snap in place and they feel nice and nice and solid. Uh, and then this part, of course, connects to the tabs on the woofer. And we have a woofer negative and woofer positive. And they're sized differently so that if, you're, if, you, if your brain doesn't work, at least you're, when you go to cram it on there, it's only going to work if you've got it going the right direction. So that's a plus. Ha, no pun intended. All right. Uh, get 
that backed up just a little bit. And that feels good. So we got that pushed down on there. Got that pushed down on there. So now we could take this little uh, zip tie that comes with the thing and use it to contain our wires in such a way that they're out of the way. And we'll just like zip tie that like that. And Bob is your uncle. Okay, I'll put it over here. I have my own zip ties, but I'm trying to use the stuff that's in this box, so you guys understand that. Just to see if you literally have everything you need to do this job. And so far, I can say yes. So I'm going to slip this on here. Now, my side cutters are in the house, I think. So I'm going to push that back. I want to try to get this wire... Uh, kind of out of the way so I want to make sure that I get it kind of snug because so I'm going to pull it back this way a little bit and give it a nice nice tug and then my side cutters will cut that off except I don't have them with me right now so this is the finished product and uh, it's good and solid all right so I got those backed out nice and uh, wide and uh should be able to get that up in there pretty good. Looks pretty good. And that's what happens when your camera falls over. Alright. Clamp it down. I, I have some really thick speaker wire. So, yeah, that's good. That's on the positive side. So I'm going to have to work at these more than most people will. I've got some really healthy speaker wire. Uh -oh. So now that I've got that, I've got that, boy, I don't know if I saw any of that. Now that I've got that attached, like so, I can clip that bad boy onto the speaker. And then should be able to just set her right in here and I'm going to take the time to orient my tweeter once I get this figured out here which holes are what um, I'll take the time this is not this is an AD setup up here this is one that's coming out so we two Memphises in here when I'm done. So get that organized. So oh hell. I can't have that upside down. That's hideous. Gotta fix that. <laughs> Although I do very much like the grills. Um the uh, Memphis grills. This vehicle uh, is a demo vehicle, so people are getting in and out of here constantly. And uh, I found that those types of grills just can't handle the the kicks from all the little feet. So I use these guys. These are the thump covers from CustomSpeakerPods.com. <laughs> They're virtually indestructible. You can run over them with a car, hit them with a hammer, um, whatever. They're, they're tough. Very, very tough. And if you guys are wondering about these pods and my 2010 Chevy Tahoe, these are also from CustomSpeakerPods.com. They have them for a whole lot of different vehicles. And multiple types. I got dual eights, dual six and a half, six and a half eight, six and a half with tweeter pods. You got all kind of configurations. I just chose to run this route. So, Ooh. you can see how it's sitting down in there. Getting ready to put the other one in now. Got it all wired up and fired up. 
All right, folks, we got them installed all the way around the building. I got to clean up a lot of mess in here, but we're all good to go in that department. Now I'm getting ready to uh, getting ready to run the DSP and get them tuned. All right, so here's my software getting things set up. <coughs> So channel one and two are my tweeters for my A-pillars. They're set for 6,000 hertz to 20,000 hertz with a 12 dB slope. And on the bottom. And uh, just double checking those. There's number two, same thing. And then these are the doors. Uh, they're set for 90 hertz to 6,000 Hertz uh, and I'm gonna crank that all the way up now because I had a mid in there we're gonna change that to what well, has changed that to off so there'll be no top in well that's gonna change how that sounds completely so we got 90 Hertz to nothing 12 dB slope it's probably a little bit low for these so I'm going to change that to 100 hertz. And there we go. 100 hertz. We can probably change that later. Um, 12 dB slope. <clears throat> and channel 4. Same thing, we'll turn that off and change that to a hundred. Okay, so now we got a hundred hertz at 12 dB on the bottom and nothing on the top. That's the old EQ, and then channels five and six are subwoofer channels. I think I'm just going to run one of those channels uh, I've been running two but <clears throat> come on select that to null so we're gonna run channels or channel five for the subwoofer channel six to nothing it's just gonna be a null channel and uh, Does that? Oh well, we'll sort it out. Okay, so we got channels one, two, three, four, and five ready to go, and we're running line in. We're connected, and then what we're going to do is we're going to run the auto EQ. And I'm going to tell you, all this crap in here probably not going to be good for the um, sound. Um. Uh, boxes over here so uh, that's just sober for sound it'll be all right it'll be fine so we're gonna run advanced and we're gonna and we're gonna go to get in advanced we're gonna click on auto calibrate and that brings this up now I already know that these speakers have got a little bit of brightness to them um, I do like bright but I think I'm gonna try the softer curve because target one has this it gives you this curve and target two is more of a downhill slope and I'm running ultimately a lot of tweeters so we're gonna run actually I'm not gonna bother EQ in five actually yeah yeah I am I'm gonna go ahead and do it so we're gonna EQ the tweeters we're gonna EQ the mids we're gonna do EQ delay and phase and we have all this ready because you have to make sure you have these guys checked or you don't EQ that and then we hit start and then when you hit this OK button right here that's when it actually starts and I'm going to try to let you guys see some of what's going on on the screen through the window but it's not going to be good it may work a little bit though so here we go we hit OK Let's 
let her run, see what she does. I turned the subwoofer off on this test. Just running the uh, doors and the A pillars. So the doors and the tweeters. pop up and going again. So you can see the you can see the curve it's already putting together right now. What it's reading and what it's doing to correct what's wrong. Well, what it's reading and what it's doing to correct what is not the curve that I have it set to try to emulate. So the dotted line is what it's actually seeing. Or no, I take that back. The solid line is what it's actually getting from the microphone. And the dotted line is the correction it's making to bring that frequency in check to emulate that curve that I started out with. It's also going to do time alignment and potentially reverse polarity on something if it thinks it needs to be reversed. Sometimes putting the phase backwards on tweeters and things can actually make them uh, better with a particular position that you got the mic at. It usually takes it about five to eight minutes to run, but I usually also run the subwoofer too. I'm not running it this time, so it shouldn't be too long. And what we're waiting for is that blue line to get all the way across. Provided it doesn't fail. Sometimes it does if something's not quite right. Oh, there goes the bikers. Doing 90 mile an hour down the street because it's Saturday evening. And that's what they do. <laughs> All right. We are done. Let's slip inside and have a look at the curve that it saw and what it did to correct it. So, as you can see, let me take some of these off. I'll take one and two off because they're tweeters. And I'll take three off. And we'll just look at four. So, the solid line is, the pink line is the curve we're shooting for, right? The solid line, this one, is what it's actually hearing from the speaker. So you can see the speaker. It's a little bit peaky down here. I was telling you it's a little bit bright. It's a little bit peaky. So what it did was, the dotted line is where it changed the EQ to fix the problems that it saw. And you can see that it put a dip here, put a dip here, dip there, there, a little bump there, a little dip, dip, a little bump, dip. See, it's just giving this all the love. 
all the way out to the end to try to match up that sound to that red line. And if you looked at number three, you would see a similar situation. There's a bump there, it dipped it, and then there's a dip there, so it kind of bumped it. You know, just adjust it all the way across to try to get the sound to work. All right, so then once you get done with this, then you go down here to save data and press that button. I'm gonna hit it again, make sure I hit it. Okay, now we're done with that. So then we close that. You'll see it synchronizing. And now it's going to give us our new current curve, which is this curve here. That's five. That's four. That's three. These are the ones we looked at. Three and four. And five is the subwoofer, which it, that's the old uh, curve from the subwoofer. It didn't change that. And in one and two, interestingly, it did very little to them. So, that is the left subwoofer, the driver's side. It put a little bit of a dip in that one spot, but on the passenger side, it left that alone. Pretty interesting that it, that it really didn't uh, do much to that. It also put channel one tweeter out of phase. It flipped it 180 degrees out of phase. It's very interesting. So anyway, once you get down to this point, then you have to go to scene and save as default scene. And then you choose a spot to save it. I'm going to save it on this number one spot. And it'll say that I got to put in, and I'm going to leave it the same thing. It just says driver. I'm going to leave that. And now it'll overwrite the old save. And the same was saved successfully. So now we can listen to it. Uh, you guys don't get to listen to it right now, but. I'm going to try to see if I can find something y'all can hear though. 